was not just an entertainer. He was a heck of a businessman. Thank you. <laughs> At least you said it. <laughs> and for Michael to have seen the value of all of his work and own it, and the value of the Beatles' work, and the value of um, Elvis. Elvis Presley, the Jackson. and the value of all of these, and by their catalogs, he knew that he would be a wealthy man and leave great wealth behind him for others to enjoy. And when, whenever you look at the history, of black entertainers in particular. We coming up from slavery and uh, Jim Crow not feeling loved or, or wanted or respected, when we had a gift that could be exploited, that would give us fame and some degree of fortune we were always more, uh, more prone to the fame, and we let others master the fortune. So most of our great ones died broke with a big name and talent that will live beyond them, but not something that they could bequeath to their children, to their grandchildren to, to posterity. So Michael was far beyond that. And I heard that he said to some in the closing weeks of his life that he was not going to permit those who might want to strip him to do to him what they did to Sammy Davis, what they did to James Brown, and what they did to so many others. He was determined that he was not going to be stripped of the wealth that God had blessed him to gain. Well, I basically lost my questions. <laughs> no. <problem. laughs> what do you think that really happened with Michael? You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that the people are like sheep, easily led in the wrong direction, difficult to lead in the right direction. As Michael became more and more conscious of himself and the power that he wielded, I believe forces became frightened. That if Michael made a turn like his brother Jermaine did toward Islam, if Michael became a Muslim at a time when Islam is in the news every day, but in a negative way, Michael could sway millions and millions of people to go in any direction that Michael would choose. So, um, you know, Oprah Winfrey, as long as she is the darling of television, we can stomach that. But when Oprah decided to use her tremendous popularity for Barack Obama in his bid to become president, then her ratings, or she began to get flack from others. As an entertainer, we can take it, sing, dance, play throw the ball in the hoop, run the ball across the goal line, 
hit the ball in the hole. Well, we can take that. But if you're going to use your fame and your wealth to begin to guide human beings away from destructive paths, then you become dangerous to those who profit from the loss of human beings of their dignity and their self-respect. So I suspect, and I'll go back to the first charge that Michael molested some young boy. If you know Michael, you know his tender heart. You know Michael is not a man that likes the fight. So if Michael has money a lot more than most have, ah, uh, pay him. Not because he was guilty, but because Michael did not wish the notoriety, the, the fight. So Michael paid. But the media was out to cripple him. Once you become a pervert in the eyes of the public, that's the first step in crucifixion, is to destroy your reputation. So in the crucifixion of Jesus, you know, here is a man doing all these miraculous things. And all of a sudden, one day, the people said, crucify him. Why? Because the propaganda of that day put out against Jesus made the people to hate Jesus without a cause. So this was to destroy his fan base. So after you take him down in his character, that he's not a good person, he is damaged and destroyed the life of a child. Now you begin to see this step up, the propaganda, wacko, jacko, and all these kinds of ugly things that the media kept saying about Michael. So in America, his, um, popularity, his level. popularity level went down, his recording sales went down, but his fans that were so loyal to him stayed with Michael, and in Europe, they never bought the propaganda, they bought his records. Now when Michael was riding that crest, still hurting, they came back at him again. 